people want to sell you stuff. That is true in the world these days. And when we're talking about ventilation, it's a complex topic and I know that it gets confusing and we work really hard on this channel to break down all the concepts of ventilation, of HVAC in general, of the enclosure of your home, home performance overall into very like accessible pieces for professionals in the building industry and also for normal people who just are trying to get through their day-to-day -day life with their house, whether it's a new house or an old house. So I'm gonna break down something for you today, which is something that's trying to be sold uh, to a client of mine. This is totally unnecessary. I'm just gonna say that up front. I'm gonna get into why it is completely unnecessary, but this is, uh, I've scrubbed out the, I'm not using the actual website that this is being sold on, but this is like a high-end bath, bathroom fixture website. Uh, this is called the Atmospheric 410. It's an in-shower ventilation exhaust fan system. Uh, this is, was being considered for a house that is gonna be a very airtight house, a typical house for the kind of people who watch this channel. You know, you're watching the Build Network, you're using some kind of WRB sheathing outside, you're paying attention to air sealing, you're trying to make sure that there are no bugs in the house, that the house is noise controlled, draft controlled, all that stuff. You now have a tighter home and you're gonna to need to have balanced ventilation. So what this thing is, is a uh, collection of machines, this being the main one right here. This is a bath exhaust fan. It's an exterior mount one. This is a 120 CFM bath fan system. Now, this one is different because it costs $2,400. What is the difference between this and a 120 CFM exhaust fan that you can get at a big box store today for $200, less than one-tenth the cost? They're kind of confusing about that. There's a lot of marketing speak that we're gonna look at today. And the thing is that people think that because they're gonna do a steam shower, that it makes everything different. It does not make everything different. It makes everything exactly the same. So this is a shower. If you wanted this to be a steam shower, the only difference is that you might have a steam generator um, you could do this without the steam generator potentially. The, the idea is that you're just hanging on to all the steam that's being created. It's not going outside through the exhaust fan. This steam shower that we're looking at right here is completely closed. It's got floor to ceiling glass, as you can see here. The, uh, we might even have sealed, caulked, or like gasketed the uh, seams where it meets up with the tile and where glass meets up with glass. And then right here, we have what's called a transom. This transom is closed right now. So this thing, when you close the door, and potentially there's also a gasket on the door itself, when you close it up, it's completely airtight. In a home where you've got balanced ventilation, like an ERV system, which is what we talk about a lot on this channel because we're focusing on people trying to get their airtight homes under control, ERV, super important for those types of homes. If you're gonna use an ERV, all you do is you put an exhaust port in the shower, right there where the, this thing is located, not outside. This is really important and you'll see different things on different channels. Putting the exhaust fan outside the shower is basically the same as having a little toilet room and then putting the exhaust fan outside the toilet room. Like the stinky stuff is in the toilet room. Let's put the exhaust fan in there. The humidity is inside the shower. Let's put the exhaust fan inside of there. Always the right answer. Where the steam shower people get confused is they think that, oh, if I use my exhaust fan, it will be getting rid of the steam. And the whole point of this is to make sure that there's steam in here. If we've got a 25 CFM ERV exhaust port, which is, has no fan built into it, the fan that's pulling on that shower would be the central fan in the ERV. There's one fan that pulls on all the bathrooms at the same time. We're pulling 25 CFM. As soon as you close this up, and we've closed the transom, we've closed the door, you start up your steam shower, what the ERV does is stop pulling on this because it can't get any air into the shower and so it can't get any air out of the shower. So now we have used geometry to help the fact that we don't even need to activate a boost mode on this ERV. We're just on normal, nobody's pressed any buttons, the ERV is doing what it's always done. Steam shower is all closed up. Steam builds up in the shower. It's getting the walls, the floor, and also the ceiling. And in this case, this is not a good idea for a steam shower, drywalled ceiling in there. That ceiling should also be tiled because it's gonna be soaking wet. So you're gonna be painting that a lot in this iteration. Uh, now, as soon as you're done, all you have to do is prop open the transom. And you wanna do it just a little bit. The idea here is to use geometry to not in induce a major need for a huge fan. We do not need a 124 CFM fan 
in this steam shower because the steam shower will dry out. It is made, as in this picture here, you can see the tiled ceiling. Everything in the shower is made to get wet and to be wet for a little while. And if you're using some kind of like a backer system, a tile backer system, um, which we've shown on this channel, we used Red Guard in my house, you've got Schluter, you've got all kinds of different things, all that to the side. This thing can be wet for half an hour, 45 minutes after you're done with your steam shower, it's okay. Most people don't take a really heavy steam shower every single day, but even if you did, it's okay. We prop this open. The idea here is that we've got this propped open just enough to maintain a negative pressure inside the steam shower so that air goes into the steam shower. Dry air from the bathroom goes in and air never comes out of the steam shower. So when you open this up, air goes in, dries out all the condensation in there, takes it out through the ERV exhaust port, which now is working because we can actually get air through it. This mirror right here should never fog up. My house is built this way. It works perfectly when you actually do it this way. The, the reason that this is so silly, for $2,400, what this really is, is a, a cobbled together bunch of things here. So let's like look at what this is. It says, uh, oh, it's $2,600 marked down to $2,300. Congratulations, you're saving so much money, it's great. You've got different finishes, you can have the, just the like exposed grill in. And the exhaust fan, it could be a wall mount or a, a roof mount. So here it says, at the touch of a waterproof button, you can already tell, marketing people, right? Waterproof button. This innovative in-shower blah, blah, blah. Precision crafted and assembled from high quality components. That is very important phrase because this company, I mean, it's possible they don't even make any of the things that are in this kit. Uh, this is a bunch of things that you could buy yourself for less than $1,000 if you really wanted to do this, which is unnecessary as I'm already explaining. So it unites a switch, fan, damper, and grill for unmatched moisture control. Like, this is just silly marketing speak. This is not true, it's not unmatched. The fan switch is not important, we'll skip that. Waterproof wall or roof fan. Essential to any steam and shower ventilation system is an exterior mounted waterproof fan. That's not essential. Most fans are mounted inside the shower and that would be perfectly fine. And those can also be UL listed for wet location use. This one's not even important that it's UL listed for wet location use because the fan itself is a remote mount fan. So. Again, the marketing people here are getting a little confused. Unlike typical bath fans that push moisture-laden air, atmospheric 410 wall and roof fans draw the air completely outside the home. That's again, complete marketing speak. What they mean is a bath fan is mounted in the bathroom and it's pushing. This one is remote mounted outside and it's pulling. It doesn't matter. It's, it, they work the same exact way, okay? So none of this is at all meaningful. Nothing that we've read so far is actually useful in any way. Motorized damper, yeah, that's important. And this is one thing where like, it's gonna be better than the backdraft damper that's just a flap <clears throat> that opens and closes based on airflow pushing on it. So yeah, that's a little bit better. But this thing costs $150. That motorized damper is about $150 portion of this. Stainless steel grill, very nice. By, uh, two things, number one, it says, unlike traditional fan grills, this element is impervious to moisture and heat. Uh, most traditional fan grills are made of plastic. That is also impervious to moisture and heat. Um, the fan itself is only rated for like up to 130 degrees. So it's not like you could have this thing be exposed to 250 degrees, <laughs> even if that was possible. The fan will break. Um, so like this is, is a silly thing to say. Also stainless, doesn't mean stain proof, it's stain less. So it will still stain over time, depending on what you do to it. Just a reminder for everybody. So atmospheric 410 is an essential component of a luxury shower. To get back to this little list that they've got here, um, uh, exterior wall fan, 124 CFM. That is the main part of this system. Just to remind you what this thing looks like, right? We've got flex duct, insulated, that's $50. We have this fan, which I'm gonna show you right now, you could get at Supply House or HVAC Direct online yourself for $200, $218.55, okay, to be fair. Uh, but that's, it's such a far cry from $2,400. There's this, which is called a reducer to get us from the four inch duct into this. This is a nice elbow. Uh, this grill thing, whatever, like hundred bucks, I don't know. Um, this damper, 150 bucks. I don't know what this is. It looks like it might just be circuitry. This thing costs less than $1,000. When you are dealing with stuff like this, just make sure that you step back 
and you use the four elements of home performance, which are heat bleed, airflow and pressure, moisture, and contaminants in, in general. That goes for water contaminants too, and surface. And then you go through your five factors of ventilation, which are circulation, capture and filtration, humidity control, dilution air, pressure relief. We go through that in exhaustible amounts on different videos in this channel to show you like how you do that. So if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. But like in general, we have to spend money on stuff that's important in this country. And people are out there inventing solutions for st the stupidest crap. And I just can't believe that we live in this world where we've got so many things wrong. And then we've got people who are like, oh, I know what the world needs right now, this. No one needs this. Comment below if you have other things that you want to like mention to me that are out there floating around that people are buying or being uh, pressured to buy. Do uh, like and subscribe if you can. Tune in next time.